Today, I'm around the garage working on Esther. This car isn't the easiest to work on. I hope you can see there, there's one bolt missing. As you can see, I've got the hoist holding the engine up. And it's just hanging. Well, that's not ideal. I was able to pull the engine completely out of the engine bay. You can see a slight bit of damage on that bolt. I wonder if something's been flying around in the bell housing. I have just found out, I think, what has been causing my issues. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today I'm around the garage working on Esther, my ST170 powered Mark I Escort. Now the video before last, I told you that the input shaft bearing noise or what I assume is the input shaft bearing noise was getting so bad that I decided not to drive her until I've investigated it. In fact, I didn't even take her to the Hearts Auto Show the day after I filmed the video before last. Now, if you've been watching my videos any length of time, you'll know that this car isn't the easiest to work on especially when it comes to getting into her bell housing to inspect the clutch etc usually you would take the gearbox off the back of the engine with the engine in situ or some people will lower the whole lot down to do that but the way i like to do it is basically disconnect a load of stuff and then eventually hoist the engine up on the engine hoist remove the bell housing bolts and pull the engine forwards and leave the gearbox in situ and then that means that i'm able to get to the clutch but there was a couple of things i decided to do yesterday which are going to make the process a bit easier because a couple of things that I need to remove to do it the way that I've just described are the exhaust manifold and the water rail. The exhaust manifold needs to come off because there's not enough room to pull the engine forward or there wasn't before yesterday because of the battery tray and the water rail always needs to come off because I'm unable to get the engine lifting eye onto the engine without removing it or I was yesterday before I started adjusting things. So as you can see, I've butchered my water rail slightly so that I can now get the lifting eye on with this countersunk bolt. The butchery on the water rail isn't the prettiest. If I'm honest, I'll just take this bolt out, which is loose so you can have a look and to make a load of clearance here. And then where this hole is, where the bolt goes, I've sort of dug out a bit of a tunnel um, just so that the bolt is clamping up against this fully rather than just half of the bolt being used. I do need to shorten this slightly just to make it so that it will clamp tightly because the bolt is now slightly longer than it needs to be. So that's why I've left that loose to remind me. But the lifting eye can now go on and it means I won't have to remove the water rail every time that I need to hook up an engine hoist to this engine. And as I've just shown you already, I butchered this battery's tray out a little bit yesterday, which means that when I need to pull the engine forward to separate it from the gearbox, there's now space for the exhaust manifold to come forward. So I don't need to remove the exhaust manifold, which is really handy. This battery tray was butchered already. I had to cut a little bit out here um, just to clear the exhaust manifold. But yesterday I just hacked along here and along here. And then after I'd done that, I realized that there was a support um, about here here, which I've basically just bent out the way. Now, I may end up removing this battery tray properly one day. The battery's not actually sitting on top of it at all. It's just held in with this bracket. So it is, you know, surplus to requirements now. But um, for now, that should give me the clearance that I need. So yesterday when I was around here, I was able to disconnect all the electrics. I also disconnected the fuel lines and drained the tank because this fuel line here doesn't have enough slack for me to pull the engine forward. Um, yeah, disconnected all the electrics, etc., etc., etc. And today I came around here to continue taking her apart, but I only got as far as removing the exhaust system from the manifold. And then I started looking at the slave cylinder in here. And as I hope you can see there, there is one bolt missing from that slave cylinder. Now, if I'm honest, I don't think that will be causing my noise, but it's definitely worth ruling it out. Instead of putting the other bolt in this slave cylinder, I decided to completely remove it. Now this cylinder actually came apart when we took the car apart to do the clutch when I was in Northern Ireland last year. All the fluid came out of it, um, but we was able to put it back together. But this thing does squeak. Well, I think it's this, you know, it's ever since then it squeaks when you press the clutch. So I probably should just replace that. So yeah, without that removed, I'm gonna try and run the engine now. I've plugged all the electrics back in, hooked the fuel lines back up. Obviously these electrics are a lot messier than how I run them. Um, I normally tuck everything underneath throttle bodies, but yeah, just for this test, they'll be fine. I did just 
flick the ignition on and the pump wasn't super loud. So even though I drained the fuel yesterday, there must be a little bit in the line. So hopefully there's enough in the system just to do this quick test. But yeah, I've just put the exhaust system back onto the manifold, haven't bothered clamping it. Otherwise the exhaust would be really loud and we might not be able to hear what we're listening out for. But yeah, we'll see if we can uh, fire this thing up and see how it sounds. So it just started popping because obviously there's no fuel, but I could definitely hear the noise. It was worth ruling it out, but I'm going to crack on with ripping this thing apart. All right, so after a bit of faffing around, I think I'm now ready to separate the engine and gearbox. As you can see, I've got the hoist holding the engine up and underneath the car, I've just disconnected the anti-roll bar from the chassis and I've undone the bolts that hold the cross member to the chassis. Also had to take the nut and bolt out of the steering column where it meets the steering knuckle. But yeah, all this is still together and it's just hanging down. Obviously I had to take the nuts off of the engine mounts there where they bolt to the cross member. And I've taken all the bell housing bolts out. And I've identified another thing that I wanna change before I put this thing back together. It means I'm gonna to have to go and see the precision engineer, Carlo. Now this car runs a Mazda RX-8 six-speed gearbox. And to mount it to the engine, it's got an adapter plate, which you can see there. Now that hole up there, where you can just see the bolt is still in there. On the end of that bolt goes this dowel. There's also another one of these on the bottom passenger side of the adapter plate. I hope you can see that. This one I actually had to shave down a bit just because there's not enough room between the adapter plate and the sump. So yeah, this part here I shaved down and that one's actually trapped in there and that's fine. You know, I can literally just put the bolt in through here. That stays, you know, it's not moving. And yeah, that's easy to do up. But this one that goes around the driver's side, I have to sort of use mole grips on this bit. And the bolt that goes into this is really fiddly to get to, you know, around the back of the bell housing on that side. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is get Carlo to either modify this one or make one identical, except this end will have a hexagon on it. And then that will mean that I'll be able to get on the end of it with a socket or a spanner and yeah, just literally undo it like a nut. Now the reason you have these dowels is to ensure that the gearbox is dead central. You know, you need the input shaft going directly into the middle of the clutch. So yeah, I'll take that to see Carlo on Monday. And I have just realized that I didn't disconnect the fuel lines again because um, I hooked them back up to do the test earlier on. So yeah, I'm gonna take them off and then I should just be able to pull the engine away from the gearbox. Once the fuel lines were disconnected, and once I've lowered the gearbox down on the jack slightly, the engine and gearbox started to come apart, and then I used a bar in between the bell housing and the adapter plate to separate them completely. Now I was trying to be really lazy by not removing the radiator, but it's clear to see that uh, I'm gonna have to remove the radiator. And the radiator would have been a lot easier to remove when the engine was back there. <laughs> there was just four nuts and bolts holding the radiator in, although I did need to unplug the electric fan before I could fully pull it away. Well, that's not ideal. Note to self, remove the trumpets next time, or at least the third one. I decided I was gonna remove the engine completely, and once I undone the pipe for the oil pressure gauge, and disconnected this coolant hose, I was able to pull the engine completely out of the engine bay. All right, well, things escalated a bit. I wasn't planning to take the engine completely out, but it is gonna make it easier to inspect things like the clutch. At first glance, the clutch seems fine. This is a unsprung clutch in here, so, um, you know, where I've used sprung clutches before, you could just see that the springs were missing or the bit that holds the springs in was damaged. So there's none of that on this. I was kind of thinking that maybe this piece here with the spline on um, maybe would come unriveted. Um, but yeah, that all looks good. There's nothing that I can sort of, you know, rattle with my hands that could have been causing the noise. Um, flywheel still attached properly. I have noticed a bit of an oil leak though. And when I look, up in there, it's either coming from the sump gasket or the rear main seal. 
So I may just change both of them while the engine's out. With the engine out, it means I can give the engine bay a good clean. And there is something I want to fit to this car soon, which is going to require a little bit of wiring, which is probably going to have to come through the inner wing there and up in with all the rest of the wiring. So that'll be a bit easier to do while it's stripped as well. And that particular job that I want to do on this car, I've wanted to do for ages and I just never get around to it because I'll keep driving her. So with the engine out, it means that I can't drive her. There is a little bit of wiggle on the input shaft. And when you do wiggle it, you can hear the noise. And if I turn it like quickly, like that, there's definitely a noise. The clutch release bearing, um, I mean, this bit does sort of feel like it wiggles, but when I turn it, it's absolutely smooth. But I will replace that clutch release bearing anyway. But um, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna be trying to fit the other gearbox. In fact, let's go and have a look at the other gearbox and see if it makes the noises that this one does. To be honest, this one seems worse. The input shaft moves around more. And yeah, that noise is definitely worse. And to be fair, this release bearing on the old box, you know, you're not able to pull this bit away as much as you can on this bearing that was fitted to Esther. I mean, that is hanging. Look at that. But usually if it's the clutch release bearing, the noise is only there when you press the clutch. Whereas the noise I had went away when you press the clutch. But I do have one here, which we bought in Northern Ireland but never used. As always, if any of you guys have got any opinions on this, do put them down in the comments. While I'm at this stage, I think I may as well take the clutch off and we'll see how that looks. You can see a slight bit of damage on that bolt. I don't know if that is anything to do with the noise I've been hearing. I wonder if something's been flying around in the bell housing to cause the noises. Well, in my unprofessional opinion, the clutch looks absolutely fine. Still plenty of meat left on it. You know, the, the plate's not bent or anything, which was one of the things I was worried about, you know, because when we fitted this clutch in Northern Ireland, that was before I realized that the throw of the clutch pedal was um, ruining my clutches. So we sort of drove all the way back from Northern Ireland without my pedal stop fitted. And I think I drove round, you know, a, a few times for a couple of weeks before I then realized that, you know, I was getting too much throw. So I was kind of worried that, you know, it's definitely been overpressed since it was fitted. Although, you know, that was early on after it was fitted. So I was kind of worried that maybe a little bit of damage was done then. And then, you know, just general wear and tear since then, even though I have now got the pedal stop, might have knackered the clutch, but yeah, it looks absolutely fine. This piece is still, you know, nicely riveted to the plate. Uh, the plate's not bent. Shouldn't really be touching them bits with my grubby fingers, but uh, yeah, proper meaty clutch this. And the pressure plate, which was the old one, to be fair, um, looks fine. Definitely some marks in it, but nothing I can dig my nail into. So yeah, thankfully, it looks like we don't need a new clutch. As for the flywheel, again, definitely marks on there, but nothing drastic maybe i'll see if carlo can give this a skim seeing as i'm going to see him for that other thing anyway as for my oil leak um i think it's probably the sump gasket but i think i may as well just replace the rear main seal while i'm here in fact i might have one in my garage just have a look all right so i didn't have any rear main seals in my garage i do have three front main seals but i don't need to replace that but i have just found out i think what has been causing my issues. I was just looking at this spline on this clutch and the teeth just looked a bit too sharp to me. Um, and I did sort of notice some sort of witness marks around here. So I decided to just try this on here. And 
there's a bit of play. In fact, there's a lot of play. My Costa coffee has arrived and it's brought with it my beautiful assistant. I just want you to hold the camera close to this. You can clearly see how much play that's got. No good at all. So I am 99.9% .9 sure that that is what's been causing the noise. Now, while I was waiting for Cat to come, I decided to double check if I had the dowels that come on these engines, um, which would normally make sure that the forward gearbox uh, is central because you need those dowels to make sure that the adapter plate's in the correct place, which will then mean that the dowels that go here, the one that I need to get Carlo to modify, then make the RX-8 gearbox to be sitting in the right place. Because I thought to myself that if the gearbox isn't fully central, that might sort of put sideways uh, movement on, on things and possibly cause that spline on the clutch to wear out. But that dowel is in there and I will just double check to see if it's in the other side. And yeah, I can see that the dowel is in there. So it seems like that isn't what's causing my issues. Right, so I just put them nuts and bolts back onto the adapter plate and I've noticed an issue. This adapter plate is cracked there and there. So it's essentially in two pieces there. There's no other cracks around it. And I'd like to think that because this is in the correct position because of the dowels and you know it's still being held down there, I'd like to think that that crack isn't a major issue. Um, obviously, ideally, you wouldn't have a crack in your adapter plate, but I might actually get in touch with a company that supplied this and just ask them if that is uh, potentially going to make the gearbox not be in the right place. One last problem I need to solve before I can actually get this thing rollable to get back in the garage. Obviously, I still need to bolt up the cross member and stuff like that. But at the moment, the only thing holding the gearbox in is the gearbox mount that's right at the back. So I need to somehow support the front of the gearbox um, to get this car rollable. Now, the way I've done it in the past is I'll simply tie the bell housing to the strut brace brackets that were fitted to this car. But I realized less than a week ago <laughs> that those brackets were still with Chris Kemba at Clump Fab because he was gonna make me up some more brackets exactly the same, but so that I can have the strut brace higher because with the ST170 lump in it, the bar actually fouls on this plastic piece. But yeah, when I spoke to Chris about those brackets, we'd both forgotten about them, to be honest. But literally two days later, they arrived through the post. These are the ones that I had fitted to Esther before, and I basically had these zinc plated. And when I spoke to Chris, I just basically worked out that if these holes were 10 mil higher, that would be loads of clearance um, for the strut brace. So he made up these ones, which have, you know, these holes 10 mil higher. You know, he's literally remade the whole bracket on his CNC plasma cutter and um, yeah, welded them together. So yeah, these are 10 mil higher, but he thought that these looked a bit silly and they might be a bit too tall. So he then made these ones, which are somewhere between these ones and these ones. So um, yeah, one of these sets of brackets are gonna be perfect. And it's awesome that I've got two sets to choose from. Now, unfortunately, Chris Kember has decided that he's gonna be closing Clump Fab and he's gonna be going to work for someone else. Now, I've got a feeling and I hope that we haven't heard the end of Clump Fab. He's a very talented bloke. He's helped me with so many things on my projects. He's always been really positive about, you know, the jobs that he does, which is really rare to find nowadays. I'm pretty sure he's still doing cylinder head refurb. So if you need a cylinder head refurb, definitely get in touch with Chris Kember at Clump Fab. I will leave all his links in the description. And um, yeah, I just want to send a massive thanks out to Chris for everything you've done for me. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it. To fit the strut top brackets, I needed to undo the bolts that hold the suspension top mount to the inner wing. I kind of regretted undoing this one because it made the top mount fall down. But that did mean I could get a span up on the end of the bolt for this nut. With the bracket in place, I ended up driving a longer bolt into the top mount to pull it back in place. Then I was able to put the other bolt in and then I took the long bolt out and put the third bolt in. I then jacked the gearbox up and tied it to the bracket with cable ties. But the cable ties weren't strong enough so I redid it with some rope. Once I'd bolted the cross member and the anti-roll bar back to the chassis and cable tied the exhaust system to the bell housing, Esther was ready to put back in her garage. All right, well, 
I'm glad that I managed to figure out today what's been causing all the noise inside Esther's bell housing. Not really happy that it's another clutch that hasn't even had a chance to wear out. It's just structurally not strong enough. Unless there is something else going on with the alignment of the gearbox. Um, but yeah, any opinions that you guys have got, feel free to put them in the comments. Be interested to know what you think. This evening, I'm going to order the rear main seal and a new sump gasket. May as well replace those while the engine's out. And I'll get another set of flywheel bolts because I don't think you can reuse those ARP ones. And uh, yeah, I've just realised that it's a bank holiday on Monday. So I'll have to wait until Tuesday to go and see Carlo about getting that dowel um modified or remade but yeah disappointing that esther's going to be off the road for a bit but it does give me an opportunity to crack on with some bits while she's not drivable and i'm seriously considering modifying the tunnel um while she's in bits uh, my good friend rob said i can borrow his little welder so uh yeah i might be hacking into esther with the angle grinder pretty soon now tomorrow i'm actually going to see the guys at inky's autos to have something done for maud my mark ii escort that is frowned upon by many if you're a patron you'll know exactly what i'm going on about and i've actually got some good and bad news about maud but yeah it looks like she will be back on the road pretty soon which is good especially now that i'm not going to have esther to drive for a while other than that the day after tomorrow i'm planning to go to herbie's diner for the fiesta one two three meet be called cool to catch up with ad and all the rest of the guys down there and i do want to find some time to dive back into cracking on with heidi as well so yeah times are busy for me at the moment plenty of stuff coming up on the channel so stay tuned if you are new to the channel do click subscribe to keep up to date with all future uploads if you thought this video is any good please do give it a thumbs up and a share if you didn't give it a thumbs down feel free to follow me on facebook tiktok and instagram check out my website for merch and parts massive massive thanks to all my patrons for your ongoing support massive massive thanks again out to chris kember at clump fab for sorting those brackets out for me so quickly really really appreciate that but yeah as usual, all the links to all of that will be in the description along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, from me and my beautiful girlfriend Kat, thanks for watching.